You can turn in your King James Bible to the book of Proverbs, and we'll be going to the first chapter. And I want to talk to you today about the key to understanding the end times. Um, one of the most amazing things about the Bible and about God is the fact that there are many things that are very complicated, very complex, but actually it's very simple. You say it's a contradiction. Well, not really, because you see, in God's system, He will tell you the basic simple things, and it's just you live by faith, you believe it by faith, you trust in the Lord. You don't need to understand all the really deep stuff, but the deep stuff is there if you want to study it. Okay, <clears throat> uh, Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. What happened when He died on the cross? What are the details of it? Well, He shed His blood. He, you know, all the different things. But His stripes were healed, and there's a lot of different things there that that went in with that death, the burial, and the resurrection. But all you have to really know is He died for your sins. See how that works? It's very simple, but it can be very complicated when you get into the details of it. Well. A lot of people, with the end times, they focus on the really detailed, what about the different seals and the trumpet judgments and, and you know, all the other things in the book of Revelation, the vials of wrath that are poured out, and, and whose mystery, Babylon, and what about uh, the city there, the great city that fell, and the two witnesses, who are the two witnesses? All this complicated detail, but when you get right down to it, uh, there's just a very simple way to look at the end times. You say, what's that? Who is it for? Now, if you're a nut, you'll think that it's the church. The church is all about, you know, the end times is all about the church. God has to purify his church. And it's purification through suffering. Sounds a little Catholic to me, but that's what a lot of these nuts believe. If you're a post-tribber, you believe that the church has to be purified and that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, does not cleanse you from all sin. It's not there to make you pure. No, your suffering makes you pure. And we're going to see that some people won't make it in the future. They're just not as good of a Christian as you are. That's what post-tribbers believe. You believe you go through any time of it. If you're there, if you're here on the earth to see the Antichrist, you are going to, there's a, a, a little bit of works involved with your salvation. Don't tell me that there isn't. All right. That's just the way that it is. But what does the Bible actually teach? The Bible actually teaches that there are two groups that are part of the end times. And I'm going to show you that in this series of studies. Um, the two groups are the Jews and the Catholics. That's what it's about. And I'm going to prove it to you. And I'm going to show you sources like the Catholic Catechism. It's up there. I'm not going to get it down right now. It's for another study in this sermon series. It's going to be a five-part series. And um, I'm going to show you from their own sources, from a Jewish rabbi as well, playing the video. I'm going to prove to you what I'm going to say. This is going to be an extremely deep study, uh, not for the faint of heart. This is very strong meat. It took me about a week to get these notes done. And these are the kind of notes you don't just go in there and say, okay, I'll look at this commentary and I'll read this guy here and I'll just kind of put all this stuff together and then call it mine. No, no. This is searching the scriptures, intense prayer, going into a very just uh, deep mode of concentration. Okay, I don't want to look at anything else or hear anything else. Lord, please show me. What does this say? And in reality, I've been struggling with this study and, and going through this for years. Okay, trying to think of how to put these arguments together and whatever else. And the Lord revealed them to me here recently. So this is not something that happens easily. And I'll just say this. This study has been, there's been a lot of hindrances uh, where I wanted to get these recordings done. And, oh, this came up and I have to take care of this and all this. Thing, the shipment was supposed to come in and it was delayed and then it's, it's supposed to come in another day and all of that stuff. And right now, there are some things that have come out where they're very important for me to work on. Not going to get into the personal detail stuff there, but extremely important. And I can't do it right now because these studies have to get recorded. And that, that's just the way that it is. But let's begin here. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. A wise man will hear. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. A lot of people out there, they're looking for YouTube shorts. They're looking for 30 minutes or less or something like that. These aren't the studies for you. Okay, go someplace else, play video games, or do whatever else you want to do. A wise man will hear. It takes time. And will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark 
sings. Um, there's a lot of things that happen in the dark, a lot of things behind the scenes that are not out there. Uh, reproved, we have to reprove them and make them bring them to light. But a lot of the things that happen in the dark behind closed doors, so to speak, um, with people that are globalists or serv servants of the devil, whatever group you want to make them part of, um, a lot of that stuff has to be brought out and made. We make sense of it and say, this is what they're planning. This is what the whole thing is. And that's what this study is going to be about. The inner workings between the Jewish people and the Catholics, the higher ups. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And as I said earlier, if you're going to um, just cross this off, oh, it's too much. I'm not going to, I can't sit here for five studies, you know, each one's about an hour. That's too much time. Then uh, it's not for you. It's just that simple. Proverbs chapter 28. Let's go there next. But you see, instruction is coupled with fear. And you don't go with, uh, well, I, I don't think that this is right because it might make me unpopular or something like that. You look at the scriptures, you look at the proof of the scriptures, and you look at the proof of what's going on out there in the world, and you say, okay, do these two merge? Does this work out? Yes, it does. Well, then I better believe it, and I want to study this thing. Um, and the, you know, the beauty of what we have today with our modern technology is that you can take this video and you can listen to it while you're driving. I have a lot of truck drivers that uh, hopefully you're driving away from New York City right now, <laughs> not going there, but um, in any of the other liberal cities and things. But, you know, a lot of truck drivers, they'll listen to me as they're driving places. Um, you know, uh, people, you know, housewives and they're doing kitchen work or washing dishes or sewing things or making food and you're listening to me. Um, it's pretty neat that you can have that opportunity. It isn't that I showed up in this downtown someplace here in Maine and if you were there you heard it. If you weren't there you didn't hear it. Uh, we have a, a great blessing to be able to listen to these recordings and things. So five hours of time or however long it's going to take me, I don't even know. Um, you can spend that time and really think about what I'm saying. But let's continue here. Proverbs chapter 28, verses 4 and 5 uh, says here, They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Evil men don't understand the judgment that's happening. Evil men look and they say, oh, there's war coming? Oh, I, I hope not. I hope that we don't see war. People could get killed. People could get hurt. Uh, well, you know what? You study history. Wars kind of take care of a lot of the problems in society. All right? Um, war is a necessary thing when you have sinful people on this earth. Well, but we're better now and we, we'll have uh, less sin and so we won't need war. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, there's a time coming that's very necessary. A time that's coming where people are going to be judged. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, also known as Daniel's 70th week. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Who's that? Israel. The end times are about the Jews and the Catholics. And I'm going to be proving that as we continue through this study. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Verses 9 through 13. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. And we'll see here in a little bit that Jesus Christ does the same thing. He says, He repeats this in the New Testament. People can get so wicked that the Lord basically says, I'm going to send strong delusion. I don't want these people to understand because I don't want to save them. Huh. Do you think our attitude towards sin and wickedness should line up with God's feelings towards sin and wickedness? Or should we go with this, uh, oh, I just hope people don't get hurt. Oh, I just hope that bad things don't come. I don't wish anything on anybody. You fall into that stuff. You better be careful about that because you're going away from how God feels. Verse 11, Then said I, Lord, how long? 
And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. There's a holy seed. Huh. And as we'll see throughout this study, that seed is called, the holy seed is called a remnant. And the Lord has to shorten days so that some flesh would be saved. For the elect's sake, the days are shortened. There's a holy seed there. Hmm. And if there's a holy seed, then there must be a mingled seed. And I'm going to show you the scriptures today. That's what the end times are about. You better get a hold of it. Ezekiel chapter 3. Turn towards the New Testament. You'll come to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. Let's read that. <clears throat> And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech, and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech, and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Huh? Verse 7, But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Uh, interesting. Hey, Ezekiel, I want you to go to talk to your own people. I'm not sending you over to some other, you know, the European people or something like that. And, and you go to talk to them in your Hebrew you're, that you're speaking. And they're saying, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. You know, the language that they would have been speaking there. Um, uh, no, no. Uh, but you know what, Ezekiel, if you did go to those European people or go down into Africa or wherever else, they would actually, once you get past the language barrier, they'd be interested to hear what you're saying. Ezekiel, I'm going to send you to your own people that understand Hebrew. You're going to walk in there, you're, you're going to start telling these people, and they're going to say, we don't want to hear it. It's not because they can't understand it, it's because they don't want to understand it. Like the Bible talks about, they're willingly ignorant. They, I don't want to hear about that. Come on here. I don't want to hear about this. Just like a lot of people today, you try to tell them about the end times. You try to tell them about, you know, the Bible said these things would happen. It's amazing. And uh, Come on. All right. Uh, just uh, keep that weird belief stuff away from me. Hmm. Very interesting. Next, let's go to Daniel chapter 8. It's an amazing thing to me um, how a lot of people just don't want the truth. They're more interested in uh, video games and silly things and fails and, and uh, hot rods and, you know, how to put on makeup tutorials and, uh, you know. Hey, you know, things are kind of getting bad right now. Maybe you should listen to some Bible prophecy. Ah, come on. Ah. Daniel chapter 8, verse 15 through 27. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Ulai, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision." talking about the end times that are coming. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall be. The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences. 
for what we said earlier back there in Proverbs chapter 1, dark sayings. Here you have his understanding dark sentences. Shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The holy seed. Huh. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify in himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. You you and uh, peacekeeping troops. Yeah, look what they've done down through the years. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true, Wherefore shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. They didn't understand what this world is like right now. You go back to when that was written, before Christ even showed up on the earth. You know, in terms of as Jesus Christ, he was there as the angel of the Lord multiple times through the Old Testament, physically there, manifest, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They saw him, or he was with the, them in the burning fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar actually saw him. Said one like, you know, the fourth one is like the Son of God. So Jesus was there in a pre-incarnate form. But what I'm saying is, you're going way back here, thousands of years ago, and Daniel's being shown things of today. And it just blows my mind when I think about that. I mean, can you imagine Daniel seeing our news today? <laughs> what people don't know what they are male or female and there's ones that are trying to have surgeries done to change them and these people identify as dogs and this person says that they want to be called a they and, a, and uh, huh watching youths walking around looking at a little box like this walking down the street <sighs> this is one messed up time and daniel's there and he's saying uh daniel fainted and was sick certain days it's a pretty bad time that we live in right now. Somebody from the past gets a, a little bit of a vision of it, and they go, oh, 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 boom, falls down sick. Everybody comes, Daniel, are you all right? Are you all right? Oh, man, oh, get, me, get me something to throw up in again. Oh, oh here it comes. Yeah. Just from seeing where we're at right now. Do you ever feel like you're going to get nauseous and vomit over what's going on? Me too. Daniel chapter 12. But again, we see the thing of understanding. None of the people back then understood it. And Gabriel tells Daniel, seal it up. You're not going to understand right now. You couldn't possibly understand this thing thousands of years ago. People had a lot more sense. They were a lot smarter. Sorry to all the evolutionists out there. People were smarter in the past. Um, but seal it up, Daniel. It's not going to make any sense, but things are going to work out. The Lord has it all part of his plan. Daniel 12, verse 7 through 10. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time and times and and in half. There again, that's where you get your three and a half years. Time being one year, times being two years, and a half being the half of a year. Three and a half years. The time of Jesus' ministry on the earth. Um, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, there it is again, the holy people, the holy seed. That's what it's talking about. He's scattering the power of the holy people. All these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. He said, Well, praise Lord, we understand it right now, don't we? Um, we can see a little bit more clearly, but quite frankly, we don't understand it either. Oh, we will in the future. Well, when we're with the Lord in heaven, yes. Uh, the 24 elders up there, they cast their crowns before the Lord. And there's a great number of angels. Uh, basically under somewhat under 200 million that's the resurrected saints and we're up there around the throne and that's when the lamb is the only one worthy to open the seals what do we just read here 
the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Verse 9. We're not going to understand it. Well, that's not true, Brother Ryan, because I have seen Dr. So-and-so's commentary on the book of Revelation. He knows everything that happened. He doesn't have a clue. Doesn't have a clue. Just like you see a lot of the old commentaries in the past, and they'd say, well, the King James Bible is obviously an error in Revelation chapter 13 because it says the mark would be in the right hand or in the forehead, and that's not possible. How could you buy and sell with something in the hand or in the forehead? It, it has to be on or upon. Um, well, actually, we have implantable microchips now and neural links you know, in people's brains and things now thanks to the devil Elon Musk. Not, not, he's not the devil as in the top, you know, Satan. He's just one of his little minions is what he is. Uh, what a wicked man. But uh, that's where we're at. Now we can look and we can say, yeah, in the right hand or in the forehead. But for years, the uh, old 400 plus year old authorized version here, today known as the King James Bible, um, it was saying in, not on. And people doubted it. I've seen all the commentaries, you know, well, in it, should, it would be better translated as on. Well, you're back there in the 1960s. You didn't understand the technology that we have right now. And you know what? Right now, we don't understand the kind of world that's going to be there in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's sealed. And Jesus Christ is the one that interprets it. You know why? Because the book that it appears in is the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Huh. Jesus Christ is going to reveal himself to two groups. Israel and the Roman Catholic Church. Jesus doesn't need to reveal himself to me. That happened years ago. I have a personal relationship with him. We have fellowship of the Spirit between us as saved people. We don't need to have Jesus revealed to us. But the Jews and the Catholics will in the future. Verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Hmm. Isn't it amazing? Just something as simple as the economy right now. Uh, the dollar and gold are the two tier one assets right now in the world. With the International Monetary Fund and whatever, and the Chinese and the BRICS nations and things. Uh, the BRICS nations, I'll just say it that way. They're coming up with their own IMF bank type of a thing, their own version of it. They're coming up with their own currency and they're doing all this other stuff. Uh, we're 34 plus trillion dollars in debt probably 35 trillion soon, you know, and just it's spiraling out of control. I see people all the time bringing their trucks up with their snowmobiles. Let's go snowmobiling. Hey, is that stuff paid for? No. The economy's never been better. And you have Joe Biden, the president right now in uh, February, late February of 2024, and Joe Biden's saying the economy's great. Janet Yellen said so. Jerome Powell said so. You know, and before them, Donald Trump, the economy is the strongest economy in American history. Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, you were bailing out that economy. It's not the strongest economy ever in American history. 1971, the dollar was taken off the gold standard. We've lost 97% of the dollar's purchasing power. Literally, people, if they've had their money in the bank for 20 years, they've lost all kinds of percentage of, of value of that dollar. It buys a lot less now. Go to the grocery store. See what I'm talking about. But the economy is great and everything's wonderful. What's going on? <clears throat> None of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. We know, those of us that are saved, we know that the Bible said that there would come a point in time when people can buy and sell things with a mark. It's no longer cash. It's no longer a form of currency. We know in that time that's coming that the gold and silver is going to be useless. We can see it. We understand it. It's coming. But you know what? The wise understand, but none of the wicked understand. The key to understanding the end times. What is it? Who is it about? Who is it for? You see, the, if you look at children's books with the Noah, story of Noah, the flood in the days of Noah and everything, it's, you know, God told Noah that there was going to be a flood. It was a very bad flood. And because God loved Noah, God said to Noah, 
Noah built a big boat, and he called it an ark. And so Noah began with his three sons to build the ark because of the storm that's coming that God warned Noah about. Uh, no, that's not the story. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and he says, I will destroy man whom I've created. I will destroy these creatures. I will destroy this earth. The time of Jacob's trouble, it's coming, isn't just some kind of a thing of it's called the, the great tribulation, and it just kind of shows up in the future, and everybody kind of goes, oh, I didn't know that that was coming. God says, I, I could see it coming. You know, I could see it kind of as a storm cloud on the horizon. And I, I said to my servants, please be careful because I love you. That's not what it's about. There are some very wicked people on this earth right now. And that's what this study is going to be exposing. And those wicked people have been working for, not for 20 years, 30 years, 50. They have been working for millennia, thousands of years to create their system. This image, this great image, and the stone that's made without hands comes down and goes boom, and smashes this image and just grinds it to powder. This thing has been thousands of years in the making, and you, dear viewer, are right at the end of it. Right near the end. Understand the end times. It's not about the church. It's not about the average person out there. It's about the nation of Israel and the Roman Catholic Church. Because they've yoked up. And I'm going to prove it. <laughs> Math, or excuse me, uh, Hosea. Hosea chapter 4, the very next book over. Daniel and then Hosea. Hosea chapter 4. <clears throat> and we're going to read the whole chapter here because there's a lot of very important things. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1 through 19. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. How you doing there, modern Israel? Is there much knowledge of God in your land? By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish, with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. It's amazing how many animal die-offs we've seen over the last, what, 10, 20 years or something like that. We keep seeing this thing. I remember after the Fukushima thing there in 2011, I think it was, and it was just fish die-offs and animal die-offs and all this other stuff. Oh, but the King James Bible is just old and art cake. It's a fairy tale book or something. Uh, no, it's actually telling you what's going to happen in the future. And it's coming to pass. Verse 4. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophets also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Very important there. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou should, shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests. And I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom. Huh. Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The kings of the earth commit fornication with her. We'll be talking about that in future studies with this series. But the people, they shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. The woman, she's got a cup of wine in her hand. Huh. The Roman Catholics with their Eucharist. The wine is the blood. Drink the blood. So it's not actual blood. Yes, it is. Don't you speak her or heresy. They believe it's wine, or that wine is blood. Yes, they absolutely do. Verse 12. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err, and they have gone a-whoring from under their God. 
They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. Literally saw one of the part of the research I was doing for this study. I'm going to be playing some of the video of this. A Jewish rabbi in New York City, Rabbi Mordecai Kraft, and he was talking about during Nazi Germany, right before the whole thing happened over there, the Holocaust, he said the marriage, intermarriage rate between Jews and Roman Catholic Germans, Japhetic people and Shemitic people, was 50% of the Jews that were in Germany were marrying, intermarrying with German Roman Catholics. Huh. It's been going on for centuries. It's been going on for, again, for millennia, not just centuries, millennia. The Jews have been intermarrying. They're told over and over again not to do that, and they just keep doing it. And then people, wicked people today, they watch and they, they look at the Bible and they say, well, so-and-so did it and God still blessed him, so it must be okay. No, it's not. If God says, you're a peculiar people, a separated nation, I've done certain things for you, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their seed, their physical seed, why would you intermarry? Why would you mingle yourself, the holy seed, with other people? Why would you do that? Because you're trying to commit whoredom. You have financial reasons to commit that whoredom. That's what this whole thing is about. That's why the Lord has to judge them. Verse 14, I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that doth not understand shall fall. The people that doth not understand, they'll fall. You know, there's a concept in Scripture, thine own wickedness shall correct thee. You start to mess around with strange flesh and outlandish women and things, and God says, hey, you know what? I'm not even going to correct you for that. I'm going to let you look like you're getting away with it because you won't be able to understand things. You just knocked yourself out of the promises that I gave to your fathers because you committed whoredom. You messed around with harlots. So I'm not even going to warn you. Just go ahead and you do it. Verse 15. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend, and come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Beth Haven, nor swear the Lord liveth. For Israel slideth back as a black backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. Their drink is sour, they have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers with shame do love, uh, give ye. The wind hath bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. This isn't early on. okay? This isn't back in Genesis or something. This is towards the end of the Old Testament, when God finally just says, okay, you know what? I'm done. And you have hundreds of years, I think it's about 400 years or so, they say, between the finishing of the Old Testament and when Jesus Christ showed up on the earth. And for 400 years, Lord just said, I'm not even going to speak to you. You've had enough. I've given you my prophets. I've given you the Torah through Moses. And I've given you all these different things, the Psalms of David and the Proverbs of King Solomon and, and all this stuff that I've tried to tell you about. I've tried to warn you. I've tried to do things for you, and you just continue to commit whoredom over and over and over again, turning after other gods, going after other promises that I made to other nations. You try to get into that because we want to get the money and whatever else. You've been wicked. How sad. Matthew chapter 13. Go over to the New Testament now. I mean, I don't understand how somebody can read all of this and then say, the uh, Great Tribulation is about the church. <laughs> What's Israel? Well, we've replaced Israel. We're now, you know, Israel. Or the church is Israel, and, and it's all about us. I don't understand that. Matthew chapter 13, verse 13. Number 13 is the number of cursing in the Bible. Um, <clears throat> number of a curse, I should say. Interesting. And 15 is 3 times 5, 5 being the number of death. Hmm. Coincidental, I shouldn't have said anything about that. It doesn't have any meaning. Matthew 13, verse 13. 
Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, we were reading earlier, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh on the earth, and he's saying, I'm not going to say this stuff to certain people because I don't want to see them converted and I should heal them. I'm just going to keep it back from them. Huh? Well, how do you work that out if you're a hyper soul winner? Going knocking doors, and I'm not letting these people get away until I'm going to get them to pray the prayer. I'm going to make sure that they're saved whether they want to be or not. It's not what Jesus did. There are certain people you come to and you just simply say, would you like the gospel? You'd like to share the gospel with you? Get out of my face. Oh, okay. All right, go on to the next one. You don't argue with people. Well, that's not very Christ-like. Well, actually, yes, it is. <laughs> because it's what Jesus Christ did. Acts chapter 28. So many people want to be like Jesus, and yet you look at their life, and their their life doesn't bear anything at all in resemblance to Jesus Christ and what He did. Acts chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty-five through twenty-nine. Well, doesn't the Bible say you're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Absolutely, but it doesn't say you're supposed to convert them. That's God's job. Acts chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty-five. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well, speak, spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. Hmm. Saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Huh. You mean... Jesus referred back to the book of Isaiah that we read earlier. Now Paul is referring back to the book of Isaiah. Speaking of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, some of these Jewish rabbis, they are so blind, they are so ignorant of Scripture, it is incredible. It's amazing. And the worst part is, they don't even understand. They'll look, they'll look at this study and they'll say, Brian Denlinger's anti-Semitic. He hates the Jews. He's a, he's a Nazi or something. Racist, you know. You don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, if you're a Jew, listen, right? If I could smack you across the head, I'd do it. Listen to me. Listen. I am trying to get you to the point where you realize that your Messiah came in the first century and he died on the cross to pay for your wicked, miserable sinful self, and if you put your faith in him and he saves you, you don't have to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. You don't have to go in and see all that horrible stuff. Now, if that makes me your enemy, well then, sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. Verse 28. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. Praise the Lord, I heard it. I don't have some kind of little thing. Well, actually, um, I don't think that Jesus qualified to be the Messiah because he didn't bring in all the promises of the Messiah in his first coming. So I don't see any kind of a first and second coming in the Old Testament. And, I don't, well, and, and he didn't do this and he didn't do that right. And so I can't... He died for a wicked old sinner like me? Really? Wow. And this King James Bible tells me about that? And it says if I put my faith in him that he'll save me, call upon the name of the Lord. God, could you please save me? Talk to the Lord, and the Lord says, yeah, I'm going to save you. I'm going to put my Holy Spirit within you. I'm going to show you the truth, guide you into all truth. Will you do that for me, Lord? A wicked, miserable little Gentile like me? Thank you. I'll give you my life. Oh, but what about this? What about that? What about... I don't need to know about all that stuff. I don't need to get into your little arguments because I've learned over the years, you answer people's arguments and then they'll come out with more arguments. You can get into all the arguments with people and I know how to argue. Believe me, I've learned that very well over the years, being on YouTube and 
having all the people attacking me and everything all over the internet. I've learned it very well. But you know what? When I deal with lost people, I ask them a very simple thing. Do you know where you're going to go when you die? Well, you see, uh, your beliefs are this. Do you personally know where you will go when you die? Well, I believe I'll go to heaven. You believe or you know that you're going to go to heaven. Put them on the spot. Does the system that you're part of, does it teach you that you can know that you have eternal life? Or does it say that you can guess and that you have to do good works to someday merit that eternal life? You might have to go to purgatory and burn for a little bit, or you might have to go do more door-to-door -door stuff, or you might have to, you miss church a few times, so you, you know, have to do a little bit of penance or something. No. You're supposed to know that you have eternal life. Read 1 John chapter 5. You don't have to waste your time with a lot of stuff with these people. But verse 29, we'll finish up here in Acts chapter 28. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. Uh, what is there to reason? Jesus died for your sins. He came into his own and his own received him not. There he is. What are you going to do about it? Well, let's, let's, let's do some reasoning here. Um, if we would go with the Talmud reading such and such, and, and Rabbi um, Ben Yehuda Saluda, whatever, um, in the uh, fourth century, he came out with a thing and he said, um, yeah, but that would, uh, yeah. maybe if we study the Kabbalah or something, then we can get the special answers and, and you know, maybe if we join with the Roman Catholic Church and, and we do the banking for the Roman Catholic Church and we could, you know, we could do the finances and, and that would help us. And, uh, the Jews departed from Jesus Christ, and they had great reasoning among themselves. Well, how can we get into high society unless we marry into high society? Hmm. Well, but the high society people, the Japhetic high society people, they won't marry us. They have better sense than that. Hmm. Well, we'll get low society people to marry with the Jews, intermingle our seed with them, and then through banking, we can become the high society people. There we go. That'll work. Yeah, we'll just uh, lie to people and deceive people and use usury in order to make lots of money. And where's it going to get you? It's going to get you to where exactly you deserve the time of Jacob's trouble. The uh, time of punishment coming upon these people because they departed from the Lord. I mean, right now, does the world look to Israel for guidance, how to find God? Of course not. They look to Israel for guided missiles, not guidance to the Lord. Romans chapter 11. Oh, what a day it's going to be. Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Some people say yes. I know Gene Kim said that, and I brought it out in a video, and people say, well, you, you took him out of context. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. God's done with the Jews. God's finished with the Jews. That's not true. God is not done with his people. That's the whole point of the time of Jacob's trouble. You understand? I said, do you understand? Understandest thou what thou readest? God's not cast away his people. He's got future plans for them. Not for the church. Israel and Rome. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if, it be, and if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, 
Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. We're reading about from the book of Isaiah. Or Isaiah. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. There it is again. Jesus said it. Paul wrote, spoke it right to them in the book of Acts chapter 28, and here he refers to it again. Um, I think, you know, in the, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, shall every word be established? What's going on there? God has given them a spirit of blindness and slumber. We'll, keep, we'll see about that here in a minute. Why? Because they've rejected him. Israel is not God's nation right now. He has a future plan for them. But it's not some kind of a thing where they're holy. And I, I had somebody write the one time and they said, you know, well, the, all the Jews will eventually be saved, that God will resurrect them. That's not true. Um, if you die without Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter who you are. God is no respecter of persons right now. A Jew that dies goes to hell. They rejected Jesus as their Messiah. Let's continue. Verse 9, And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come to, unto the Gentiles for, to provoke them to jealousy. Hey, stupid rabbis out there, you're lost and you're on your way to hell. I'm going to be with my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, God the Father is the soul of the Godhead. Jesus is the body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. Three in one. Man is made after the image of God. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Okay, we're made after his likeness. All right, there you go. I can receive truth like that. You can't because you're lost. There are Jewish rabbi, Jewish people that are lost. If you're a Jew and you're saved, if you're born again, well, then you understand what I'm saying. You understand that Jesus is your Messiah. Jesus is not my Messiah because my people weren't looking for a Messiah. Jesus is my Savior. He's my Lord. Right? I'm born in by, by a spirit of adoption, but I don't have the same promises that a Jew had. My ancestors are non-Jewish. See how this whole thing works? Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I've taught at the Torah Institute for many years now, and you're going to go to hell, and you're going to burn. And if you live long enough to get into the time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to see some really horrible stuff. And all your little yoking up with uh, Roman Catholicism, which I will be proving in the next few videos, all that stuff isn't going to help you one bit. All your little connections and whatever else and your Rothschild banking families and all the other little stuff that you do, not going to help you. In fact, that stuff is causing the wrath of Almighty God to fall upon you. And since, you know, I don't want to get Jew confused with you know, the good, there are Jews out there. I don't want them to get confused with the wicked ones. That's why we say the term papal Juden. Juden being the Jews in, that's the German word for Juden, or for Jews, excuse me. And the papal ones are those that have joined up with the Pope, which I'll be really tying this whole thing together. You'll see. Finally, let's go to Revelation chapter 2. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 2. Verse 18 <clears throat> through 23. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, Hmm. which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the, children, and all the churches shall know that I am he, which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Hmm. Now, the question comes up. Who is this woman Jezebel? 
who was and is Jezebel on my notes. Turn the page. There's the next part of the study. Roman Jezebel and Jewish Ahab's future plans. Now we're going to get into the real meat of the study. If you think it's been good so far, praise the Lord. Um, give the Lord credit for that. Uh, but we're going to get into the real stuff now. Um, now we're going to get into the uh, good controversial stuff, the real meat of the word. But uh, friend, all you need to know, all the debates can be settled about the end times, the pre-trib rapture, the post-trib, the mid-trib, the pre-wrath, all the... Uh, who is the mystery Babylon, all that. It all can be solved very easily. Do you have understanding of who it's for? The Jews committed whoredom. They mingled their holy seed with people that were not part of that holy seed. They did it for power. They did it for money. They did it to protect themselves because they couldn't rely on God. Just like Naomi left Israel because there was a famine in the land. And she took her husband and her two boys and she went off and they married strange flesh. They couldn't trust God. And you're going to see the same thing with the Jews of today. Um, they have committed whoredom with all the different nations out there and specifically with the woman Jezebel. And um, they taught Jezebel a lot of things. And that merger, that satanic merger of the Jews and the Roman Catholic system is what the end times is about. It's not for you if you're saved. All the debates, you don't even need to get into it. You just look and you say, Jews and Catholics. The papal Juden and the Catholics. And the Jews are part of it as well. So technically there is there, there as well. Um, there will be Jews, a remnant that's there. They get saved. They get spared. They're going into it. Uh, but you don't have to. If you're a Jew right now, you can get saved. You can put your faith in Jesus Christ. Watch our salvation message and everything else. doesn't cost you anything. A little bit of time. And um, you can be taken out with the body of Christ before this time comes, this horrible time comes. But hey, if you need to see the proof, you want the Jews require a sign, the whole thing, have at it, man. You're going to get to see plenty of proof in the years ahead. I will tell you that. I will promise you that. For me, no, I'm getting out. When the Lord says, come up hither, I'm leaving. And then it starts the time of Jacob's trouble. So that is going to be it. And uh, we'll see you in the next study. And I'm going to learn a lot in this study. Um, I did doing the notes and everything for it. So uh, thank you very much for your prayers. And we'll see you in the next one.